Right now, I want to talk about SignalWire and sort of all the things about SignalWire. I know uh, Anthony touched on a bunch of these things yesterday in his keynote, so I really want to sort of uh, do more of a, like a dive into what we're offering, what we're doing, why we're here, and the reason we really started the company. You know, this is a, uh, a, a brand new thing that was created because we saw uh, an opportunity and a missing thing in the marketplace, and some way to actually help the free switch community that didn't rely on any sort of external factors. It was driven by us and by Tony from the ground up to really make this like the future we want it to be. Um, so we'll just get all the things, right? Woohoo! So who am I? You know, uh, Travis said it nicely. I'm a CTO and a founder of SignalWire. Uh, what do I really do? I turn real-time communications into APIs. That's really what SignalWire is all about, is APIizing all the stuff that FreeSwitch can do. Um, but what does that really, really mean is that, um, you know, as a CTO, really, my job is to help people, to help the machines, to help the people to communicate to each other. Because that's really all we're doing. I mean, all, all we're really working on with FreeSwitch is the idea that things can communicate to each other. If people didn't exist, we wouldn't need the ability to communicate. So I really find it to be like a very person and people-oriented business. And in my mindset, that also translates to trying to help um, you know, clients and consumers, trying to make this a very simple to consume company, a very easy thing to understand, uh, and an exciting place to be. So what is SignalWire? So from the ground up, I mean, uh, Tony called it a CPaaS yesterday, and that is absolutely correct. But we really are an elastic sort of cloud-native containerized SaaS, right? It is an ecosystem of communications APIs. It is the core of it is powered by FreeSwitch. Uh, but there are many other APIs, as we all know, that come along with this that you need to do to run your business. You need billing, you need user management, you need you know, account storage. Everything else that goes along with trying to actually create a communications company, that is what we're going to provide as an API service. So you can just develop your applications and everything else directly on SignalWire and not have to worry about any of the underlying infrastructure at all. And it works at a global scale, and it's all in the cloud, so you don't have to really con be concerned about uh, active resources. Right? And it is now the new sponsor of the FreeSwitch project. Right? As Tony was saying yesterday as well, FreeSwitch has always had sort of a, um, a sponsor in the past who's employed the core team to the tune of you know, millions of dollars. You know, it was Barracuda, there were others that helped propel the project forward, but also then kind of didn't dictate the direction, but also definitely influenced the development, um, whether subtly or not so subtly. And so this was started so that was no longer ever necessary. Now we are totally in control of the development process because we are funding it all of ourselves. And that is a, you know, a very refreshing thing to say, hey, we can now say as a community too, work with SignalWire, you're actually helping FreeSwitch get better. So our focus is really to help businesses develop, deploy, and disrupt. You've seen that around a couple of places, and we really do mean that. What we want to help you guys do is get these solutions out there quickly. Everyone in here is, you know, I think fairly uh, familiar with free switch and the internals and how to make it work. You also know a lot of the pain points, but out there and people you work with and clients you might work with don't know it that well. And I think we all can admit that downloading it and getting started immediately is a fairly complex process. Like you have to know the XML dial plan language. You got to figure out all the different configuration options. You know, suddenly stun and turn and all this stuff starts popping up. And these are complicated things to explain. Now, if you had a solution you could go to that would sort of abstract all of that away, clients might be able to help you out, you can develop new services faster, and actually build businesses that have a lot of value. And that's where we really want to help you. So our focus is, like, is basically three parts. Um, one is the FreeSwitch open source community. Two is the, the uh, FreeSwitch open source enterprise, which is the SignalWire open source enterprise, which is the supported version of it that SignalWire supports, and then the SignalWire cloud APIs. Um, FreeSwitch, you know, we are now the people, like I was saying, who can set the direction. And with that, a good example is, you know, 1.8.1 is now out. You can go download it tagged. It's released with Tony's keynote. And so let's all give a hand to Mike Jarris, because like, he really did like put that, he, put, he took a lot of time to put that out. So I want to I wanna thank Mike for doing that. Um, and it comes with a lot of things people have really wanted, you know, Debian 9 compatibility. Uh, we're going to continue to do tagged releases of that. That is going to you know, come down the line as well. Uh, you'll see those more frequently. Um, we are also looking for PRs from people. If you actually have code you want to submit to support the community edition, right? This is something we are always asking for. Um, people to become bug marshals. Get in there and actually help the community out, right? Traditionally, a lot of the development has fallen to uh, the core free switch team. And what we're truly trying to do is say, like, guys, this, is a really, this really is a large um, community of people with excellent programming skills who can get in there and solve problems and submit them back. And those PRs, particularly if they have code, will be reviewed and looked at 
you know, part of the signal wire is that we have the resources now to take a look at the code. Um, and if people file bugs, those will also get looked at, but bugs are, you know, require a lot of setup and timing and that kind of stuff. That's where we want community bug marshals to come in and take a look at those and kind of help shepherd this process through. Uh, we're also going to be saying, releasing more tools for the community to help do things. I know uh, Anthony was also mentioning that uh, forums might be coming along. There's a number of things we're debating internally of how to support the community even further. So we really are trying to keep uh, FreeSwitch at the core focus of what the company is all about. Um, and it will remain, as it always has been, a large, vibrant, open source community that is contributed to by us and everybody else. And we're really excited about the fact that we can make it even more uh, vibrant. I love that word. Um, and then there's the open source enterprise edition, right? So the enterprise edition, what is that? Well, that is uh, a product that you can buy that it, uh, gives you access to the core team, an enterprise release, and professional services surrounding it, right? It is based on open source free switch, right? It's just based on the one the 181 branch, uh, but it, gives, it does give you 24/7 support, gives you some dedicated real-time chat, architectural decision guidance. You basically get access to the full team to figure out how to solve your problems and help you scale and things like that. There are certain modules that we offer in Enterprise Edition only um, that you can get access to, uh, things like working with uh, Google's Dialogflow, a number of other projects like that, that you know, enterprise contacts can get to. And really, just it's all this helps with code delivery and maintenance, right? If you're a large enterprise where you need really solid reliability and up to the second you know, bug fixes with a real-time chat, you can get in there, talk to the core team, get things fixed immediately, get help with that. And this is something that really makes Enterprises' lives a lot easier and more stable. You know, no one ever got fired for buying IBM. Hopefully, people in the future will say, no one ever got fired for buying SignalWire, right? Because that is the level of stability we're looking to provide. Um, but really, where we're focusing a lot of energy too is in the SignalWire cloud, and this is where things get really exciting, right? Like I was saying earlier, the cloud is a fully elastic, containerized native platform. We've taken FreeSwitch and all the services and developed them into a large containerized solution that can be deployed anywhere. Right now, it's deployed in multiple uh, providers, you know, uh, GCE, AWS, and DigitalOcean, along with our own data centers. So it's really built to run and scale anywhere. And it was designed with the knowledge that we all have of, you know, a decades of combined experience of the pain points of building real-time communications. We know how hard this can be. We know all the irritating parts about it and the really, like, desperately, you know, things you wake up late at night being like, why is this not working? Um, and we're wrapping all of that in multiple levels of APIs. There is a simple sort of high-level API for fast implementation, an abstracted layer out that anyone from, you know, a code school graduate to anyone just kind of Googling stuff would be able to get in there and just do and, and develop and deploy a solution. And then there are the lower-level deeper APIs, the ones that are actually like the real free switch like function calls that knowledgeable developers can go in and say, hey, I want to, you know, minutely control things at the level of a typical free switch dial plan. We'll allow that as well. So we're having multiple layers to this, this stack. Um, we're going to disruptively price this to help foster innovation. We want to make sure that people aren't hamstrung by having any kind of you know, price concerns. We want them to get in there, develop quickly, and build businesses. And we're also going to provide a direct migration path for existing free switch users to kind of bootstrap this up into the cloud. So if your business is getting bigger and bigger and suddenly you hit an inflection point, you can say, hey, I need to scale this quickly, and I, want to, I, I don't want to worry about the underlying hardware resources or anything else. You can say, great, SignalWire, take my existing free switch install and everything else and just suck that up and cloudize it and make my life easier. And we say, sure, we'd love to help you with that. Um, so what does that mean in terms of actual real things we're going to be releasing and developing? Well, the first thing is going to be Mod SignalWire. What Mod SignalWire is is a module for free switch that's going to allow you to remotely control and provision your free switch. It's going to be the easiest way to get started. It will come with the source code. You download it. You put in like an API key and a token, and it'll allow you to do things like buy a DID. And it'll auto-provision your gateways. It'll just hook up your free switch already. Um, there'll be a web-based interface to sort of add dial plan users um, and user extension setup, and then actually like edit your dial plan live there. And all of that will be pulled down into your local free switch instance. If it can be pulled down into any free switch instance, right? So you have this like in your project. So if you start one up over here or over there, they can all pull down the exact same dial plans. Basically allows you to skip a lot of the XML file editing that people find very confusing up front. Again, we're trying to make this simpler for people to get on board. Back in the 2000s, free switch was developed, right, to sort of revolutionize the vendor, the millions of dollars of vendor hardware, and turn that into software on commodity hardware, and now we're trying to make it one step even easier. That was the first revolution, this is the second one, to make these services as simple as we can make them. Um, and when you're ready to go, when your things get pulled up into SignalWire, right, if you have your things already in there, you can easily switch that over into the cloud version of it at any time. You can also import existing 
uh, you know, dial plan applications and put them in there. Uh, but if you start this way, it just makes your life a lot easier. Uh, and it's ready to go, right? And it will probably come with a number of, there'll be a number of um, incentives which would, to do this. There'll be a lot of things we're going to allow with access to SignalWire uh, that we're excited to announce later. Um, so this will be really fun. Mod SignalWire is coming along the line. It's not dead ready to download right yet, but uh, it should be around shortly. Th yeah, th thank you, yeah. So SignalWire, the next thing is uh, LAML. That's what, this is what he's super excited about, because this is actually a very exciting product right here. Uh, and what is LAML? It stands for the Legacy Antiquated Markup Language. Uh, and it's the name we've given to all the existing markup languages that exist to do basically static call flow. Um, everything from you know, uh, Twimmel to sort of uh, markup JSON, they really just have to upload a file and it's just constantly doing HTTP REST posts back and forth and callbacks, right? It's, ki it's kind of, it was revolutionary seven years ago, it's not so much anymore. Right? You constantly have to stand up web services on your side, respond to things. It's not really real time. Uh, but what we wanted to do is create a compatibility layer for that, because we know people have existing applications that are very heavily tied to this and have invested a lot of time and money and engineering into this. And we said, that's great. You know, we want to help you use the next generation of APIs. So we built an, an identical compatibility layer to this. Right now, it supports Twimmel markup language. Um, it will continue to support other ones down the line as we add them. Um, and it is feature to feature compatible with the existing Twimmel. So you can literally take an application, change the base URL over to SignalWire, and it will just work. Um, it's a simple migration, right? It will, we actually have added a lot of the, it's, it's built using the underlying real-time framework we built for our next generation APIs, and we've just sort of covered that in a layer of making it sort of compatible with the existing players. Um, there will be full documentation about all of this, um, which features we support and which ones are still coming. Uh, but if you see some that we don't have, uh, we would love to you know, add them in quickly. And it's available today. You might have seen it if you have your demo account already. You would have seen like a legacy XML tab. Well, that has been changed to LAML, and you can go in there today and actually change your applications over and start using it and see how it works. And uh, to show you, I'm actually going to do that right now. So, because I like dangerous demos. So, let's go here. So, here I am at MySpace, right? Evan.signalwire.com. So, let's continue here. I'm going to go in here. This is a project I already set up, which is Fruit Santa Monica, where I'm from. But let's go to a different one. So I'm going to create a brand new project, right? We're just going to call it something like, you know, Glucon 2018. Woo! There we are. All right, got a brand new project here with new API keys and everything else. Well, I need a phone number, so let's go buy a phone number, all right? I always love to buy them in Hawaii because it just makes me feel good to think about. So let's do an 808. Oh, look at that. Look at all these fun phone numbers. Uh, 4413, you look good. You sure you want to buy it? I am sure I want to buy it. There we go. Bought the phone number. So now I own that. That's now provisioned and set up to pump into SignalWire. So we're going to do a voice call. What we're going to do is a LAML webhook right there. This is all. It should look very familiar if you're um, coming from the land of uh, Twilio and people like that. So I'm going to go grab a preset, actually from this other project over here real quick. I'm going to go grab a preset little Twimlet I have. So this is a thing that just creates some um, Twimmel in your browser, go back over here, we to the phone numbers, you click on this little guy here, we set our, when a call comes in, this will just post to that URL. Um, and that's all we need to do, save it. Good to go. So that just kind of looks like, well, I'm gonna do that one. All right, so that is now ready. So what do we have here? Well, let's click on here. There's been zero calls, zero anything else. So let me get my phone out real fast. And let's give it a shot, and this will go through. If we go, I gotta remember the phone number is though. Huh. 808 468 4413. And what this is gonna do is gonna do some TTS. Uh, it's gonna say, you know, welcome to SignalWire, let's get the party started. Then it's gonna drop me into a conference. It's gonna wait for anybody else to join. So, in about five seconds or 10 seconds when I'm in here, anybody else feel free to call this, okay? So, just give me one second to get in there. Hold on. Let's see here. Hello. Welcome to Signal Wire. Let's get this party started. Entering See, Evans Conference. One fun thing here is that there is actually live updates of the calls. So here's the call, right? It, you can see here that, let me mute this. See this that actually had queued, ringing, answered, process XML, joined conference. I can actually view the conference. There's someone else in here with me too. We've also started recording on this. Somebody else call this number real quick. Somebody else call in here. There we are. See how it jumped up, right? So there's an active WebSocket open to the site. So we're just live updating this as people join in. Oh God, this is gonna echo. Never mute your phones. Don't actually talk into it. But it's also live in here. You can see all these in progress calls over here, everyone in here, right? 
So then when I go over here, if I end this, I'm not going to, I left, see, I left, participants are four, call still in progress. If you all hang up your phones, this will all, you know, proceed through. You'll kind of see this jumping through, left, 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 one left, all good to go, right? So there's one person still left in the conference. Oh, somebody else, people keep joining. Stop joining the conference. Get out of here. I want to show it ending. Whoever's the one person that's left. There you go, completed, zero, there we are. Recording finished, we can download the recording of the conference right there, right? So this all just kind of works right there. There's the recording over there, right? All the actual completed over here are the phone calls. So this all works live, it works now, you can go use it, it should be. I think the debugging is that we've tried to make it even simpler than the existing solutions people have, but we'd love to know more about it, whatever you have. So that's sort of fun, right? So you can go do that today, move your stuff over, check it out. We'd love people to try it and tell us if they find any bugs or features they want. We think it's very exciting. Um, but the real focus now is also on the next generation of APIs, the ones that we are really excited about. And these are just WebSocket-fueled JSON RPC APIs. And they are f awesome. They are really fun. They are rad. Because what they give us is real-time control of the system. We don't have to deal with all these callbacks. You saw all this stuff that was happening? That was just a mess of just HTTP posts and gets and the just horribleness. What we want is to be able to get straight in there and talk to the system, talk to a free switch like you were connected directly to it. And that's what we're allowing with this new one. So the SignalWire APIs give real real-time interactive command and control. We have built a proprietary event uh, messaging bus subsystem that we call Blade that allows us to connect a lot of these different free switches together. So it's not just one free switch, it's a thousand free switches. But to you, it looks like one free switch. So it scales everywhere. We synchronize everything across all of them. It also, we use that to control all the other services, right? Everything talks over this event busing system. So all things are pumped into it in real time. And what does that mean? Well, a good example is like billing, right? So you wanna know how much a call is going through. I know right now with uh, with the HTTP solutions, if you try to post something in there, you have no idea how long a call is lasting. You only get callbacks on things like answer it and ringing and other stuff like that. Well, we give you all the states that FreeSwitch sends you, right? You get everything that comes on the pike, as well as real-time billing. So as the call ticks up or costs anything or anything changes, there's actually a status channel that gets pumped back that tells you how much it's costing, what changed, how much money you have left in your account, any other metrics you want to see. So you don't have to worry about building that on your side and tracking it. We'll just generate that for you. Also allows access to like the sub accounts, user management, extension profiling, um, dial plan creation. All these things are going to be available via the APIs to really give you like a full featured, powerful suite of tools to do. Um, and I'll again, just for real quick, how's my time by the way, Travis? Am I okay for a minute or two? I want to do one more quick demo here because this, this is the thing I'm really excited about. Some of you saw this the other day, then uh, this one. So this is the, this is just like a demo, a little app we're just playing with in the background. Um, but if I change this host to Evan right here, and I grab my settings, let's see here, I grab my API credentials. Let's just create a new token real fast. We just need a token so I can actually get access to this. Click on, there we are. So here's my project key Come on laptop. Just copy that little guy over here. Yeah, project key there and get that token. Show me that token. Slam that guy in there. All right, let's connect the WebSocket. Bam, there we go. Fantastic. So you can send an SMS here. You know, just has to attach a media message. This is all just built under the API of messaging, but it just actually just does transparently SMS or MMS depending on what you're trying to do. Um, you can control it all. I'm actually just gonna look at the calling one here real fast. So I'll set the outbound phone number as this lovely Hawaiian phone number. If any of you haven't been to Hawaii, I also strongly suggest it. It is just a fabulous place. And I will debate that with anybody. So let me just get over here, Boop. there we are. And then I'll just make this like this, so it's nice and fun. And then I'll just send it to me. Six. Okay, and actually what I'm gonna do here, because we don't actually show this stuff on the screen, is bring up the uh, inspector, right? So let's check this out. So let's start this call, bam. All right, check it out, see in here? See all the free switch? All the standard free switch event calls are coming through here. So there, we're on the call right now, right? It's calling me. It's actually ringing my, my phone here. I'm going to call from Hawaii. We can do some, yeah, yeah, there you go. Do some TTS here for a second, right? So this is TTS powered by, you know, we have lots of different modules in here for Google and Polly and Watson and everybody else. Hi there. Welcome to SignalWire. And now you can play some songs, which are also in here getting all the event returns, right? These are just, you know, you all recognize these as standard free switch events. So you can actually then do anything in here, right? This has all the different status completed events. You can program anything you want. Let's just hang that one up. So that's that little guy. 
So we're excited about that. We're going, to really, we're going to be releasing APIs extremely quickly. One of the things we want to do is constantly be rolling these out. So you're going to see new ones every week, every day, more variables. We're exposing as much of free search as we can get out there to people as fast as we can. And we're going to have open source SDKs in as many languages as we can, C, C++, Go, Ruby, Python. We have many of them under development. Several of them will be released while we're here. Uh, and we're very excited about that. We have other partners, like we partner with Google's Dialogflow to allow access to that, which I think is very exciting. You can also get access to that in your dashboard, hook up a phone number to Dialogflow, use their NLU programs. So that's a really good time. Um, anyway, uh, I know I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm short on time. So again, I'm Evan McGee. If you want me on Twitter, I'm at Startled Marmot. Uh, send an email to me at Evan at SignalWire. And uh, yeah, get out there and build some cool stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Whee!